Hey everyone, it's Tracy and I'm back for another video and today I wanted to talk about um, what's been up in my life and uh, I think I said it in a video before but I quit a full-time legal job. I'll just give you a little background on me. Uh, I have a paralegal and a political science degree. I actually took the LSAT to become a lawyer and I decided that being a lawyer wasn't what I wanted to be. And so when I was coming out of high school, you know how you have your, um, your senior advisor who helps you, you know, decide about college and stuff. Well, I went to a small Catholic school and our advisor advised me, I wanted to be a police officer because I knew I was very athletic, I played sports and I knew I couldn't sit by, behind a desk but I felt like I wanted to help people and I thought that would be great. And he basically said, uh, yeah, no. And I know my parents were, didn't want me to do it either because they thought it was, you know, too um, unsafe and they were worried about me, which I get. And then I said, okay, well, I wanna be a gym teacher. And then everybody's like, well, no, gym teachers don't make a lot of money. And so he said, well, well, my parents said that too. Why don't you be a secretary? And listen, nothing wrong with secretaries. And that's basically what I did. I became a secretary in a law firm. I became a receptionist first. So I was going to, I was going to school to get my paralegal degree. I did that. And then got my paralegal degree, became a paralegal. And then I got my political science degree. And so it just started me off on this journey that I personally didn't want to go on but at the time I wanted to listen to you know my mom and dad or you know my senior advisor who I thought knew best for me and now I'm 54 and I finally realized what's best for me and I'm an adult and I can do what I want now well within reason but uh, so I ended up how I kind of got into like my creative part, the makeup and everything else that I do was I knew that that wasn't my passion. So I started doing things to break out of it. I became a model when I was 36. It was later in life. And then um, I ran med spas. I became a licensed esthetician. I started doing makeup. It was just one thing kind of led into the other and it wasn't really planned. I didn't plan things. They just kind of happened. And I found out that I'm a creative and until now honestly that has been really hard for me to um, say to myself or call myself I remember when I started doing makeup so I always contracted with law firms when I was about 32 um, and I did this in a video before too I started contracting I worked for law firms and I was sexually harassed by three different lawyers two were partners um, in two different law firms and then another one uh, and I ended up contracting because I wanted to be in charge of who I was working for and that actually was the best thing that could have happened to me because that freed me up for time to then do my other stuff like I went to you know school to become a licensed esthetician I did that at night um, after work was over and I was a single mom and so but once I started doing that and seeing the other side of life, like I said, not sitting behind a desk, and this is for me because I am a creative, and sitting behind a desk was stifling for me. But I kept it incorporated, so it all worked out uh, on the days that I wasn't uh, doing makeup or something like that, creative, I was at the law firm, so it all evened out. And then I got scared because insurance started becoming expensive, and being a freelancer, you have to pay for your own insurance. And I had a daughter going into college and her dad is not helping with anything. I had to buy her a car. She's out of state. She's in Seattle going to college. And so I figured I have to just take a full-time job and um, you know, get benefits, get insurance, get vacation, get stuff like that. Um, so last year, and I had been working for this law firm for four years and then they took me on full-time, uh, which was nice of them. And that was in January. And what, I quit there a month ago, four weeks ago. And then after my brother passed away, 
um, in October, uh, you know, he had just turned 61 two days before he passed away from colon cancer. I realized that I had to make a change, that nothing there was going to change. I had to change. So I've taken the leap back and I'm back to um, freelancing. And is it scary? Yeah, but you know, there's been no downtime. I started doing um, makeup right away. Uh, I work with clients and I place some talent too for some shoots and that was going on right away and then um, so I'm working like three jobs now. So I'm working at the salon. I do microblading. I tattoo eyebrows. I'm a licensed tattoo artist. Um, I got a job and it's weird because I may tell the story later but I also do micro scalp pigmentation and it's tattooing heads and um, I had actually been with them, started there when they first opened in 2009. And then I went back there two years ago, three years ago. Uh, I didn't have my tattoo license yet and my microbrading license. And now I'm back and I'm doing that. So um, what else am I doing? I am um, doing the makeup and I had two covers last week. I have a cover this week and I have two the next week. And then I am also uh, going to, again, weird how life just kind of works out. I think sometimes if you trust, because I've decided I'm not going to fear anything, I'm just going to trust the process. And um, so, so when I started my law firm job like five years ago, there was another place that wanted me to work for them. And something happened where somebody else did it. And they just reached out to me and they had to find somebody who remembered my first name, somebody remembered um, what area I lived in and someone else remembered, oh, about what time it was. And so they asked um, this woman who had the database that my name was in uh, if she could find me and she found me and they reached out. And I was supposed to meet with them today but we have a snowstorm. So I'm gonna meet with them on Wednesday again and I'm gonna fit that into my schedule. Uh, too. It's like doing the scheduling for their volunteers. It's called Joseph's Coat and it gives away free clothing um, and necessities to people who need it. And I really think with where I'm at in life right now, that's going to fit perfectly. And I'll do some administrative stuff for them, some board stuff, um, you know, some behind the scenes stuff. And so I have just been feeling a surge of creativity I think because I felt like I was stifled and again looking back it's nobody's fault but my own I could have always left and I think too when I was in that toxic environment I remember thinking okay I'm gonna go in and I'm not gonna say anything negative today I'm just gonna you know sit at my desk and do my work and I would find myself I couldn't help myself getting wrapped up in that stuff and I I was becoming toxic and leaving there has been a big eye-opener for me. And so again, I'm the one in charge of my time. And even though it's very scary sometimes, like I said, I've decided to push those fears aside and just know that everything's going to work out. Um, and if it doesn't work out, then I have plan B and I can go back to the legal field. So that's nice for me to know in my, my mind, I guess, plan B. But I'm hoping I don't need plan B ever again. I don't want to go back to any law firms. Um, I did that for, what, 35 years or something. And so I want to be creative. And I thought I'd just show you some of the covers. Um, I work, I do romance novel covers. They're Christian romance novel covers. And the women are usually, they're always the heroines. And I get to do period hair and um, makeup and they have like these elaborate gowns and stuff like that. And so they always give me their books. They're really good as a makeup artist. Sometimes when you do shoots, it's hard to get your work from the clients because, you know, they're on to another shoot. And sometimes that, you know, like for books, they shoot the book a year before the cover, a year before the book comes out, which is interesting. Little fun fact. But I just thought I'd show you some of the work I've done. So... That's that, that dress was beautiful. We were at the, um, uh, we were at like a zoo and it was where all the plants are. I forget what it's called, you can tell me. Uh, this one, I really loved doing her hair and I had bought that piece specifically for this and they wanted it kind of wavy. 
So, uh, oh, this was beautiful too. That dress was beautiful. And she had the longest, that was a lot to put all that hair up. And actually they cut half of it off. Um, but she had hair literally down to her butt and I had to somehow put it up in a bun. This was fun. We did this on a horse ranch and they were actually really dating at the time. Although they're not dating anymore, I heard. Um, another fun one, we did this in downtown St. Anthony, Maine to do that. Uh, this one was shot just in a studio um, with sometimes the big elaborate backgrounds. Um, they're shot in studio like this one. And if you can see all the costumes and then the period hair, they give me reference about what they're looking for. And then I just kind of have to recreate this. So this was fun to do. If you can see, she has a braid there, but her hair wasn't very long. And I was so lucky I had gone the night before to one of my makeup stores and, um, and bought braids, like, you know, they're kind of head pieces. And it worked out perfectly because her hair was only like down to here. So I couldn't do it so that either one would come up together. So I just put it around there and it looked People thought that was her hair on the shoot. They're like, oh, how'd you get her hair to look like that? I said, it's all magic. Okay, and then there's just one more that I have here. And so that was her, she had a violin, and we were in like a mansion for that. That was a lot of fun. So those are just some of the things I do. And I'm really doing um, kind of out there makeup, uh, just having fun. I saw this reference, it was called Art for Social Change. And you know, I've been doing face paints recently. I'm really having a lot of fun with those. And I just think of things in my mind and I just try and create them. And this last one I painted my face and um, I turned myself gold before. You know, I've turned myself into a boy. And I am going to hopefully do one look a week like that. It really, again, gets me thinking. And I actually think I'm gonna start painting. My mom was a painter. My daughter is a great, she draws really good. She loves to paint. And um, yeah, I am just really filled to the brim with creativity and I can finally call myself an artist. Even though I felt like a paralegal living on the side as a makeup artist. And now I'm a makeup artist and I'm a makeup artist and I'm creative and I'm an artist, I'm an artist. And you know, it takes art to do the eyebrows. I have to draw them on, I have to draw them on evenly. I have to, it's very precise um, drawing the strokes. And I've realized now at 54 that that's where I want my energy to go because that's what really like jazzes me. So if you want, go to my Instagram. I'm gonna try and put some pictures in here of some of the makeup I've done lately. Um, I post on my Instagram. I keep forgetting when I take the pictures, um, I take them vertical. And then in video though, when you put something in a video, uh, they have to go horizontal. So otherwise it doesn't fit, you only see part of it. So I'm gonna try and turn them horizontal and take a picture of them and see if I can fit them in here. But I'll put them right here um, so you can see a little bit of what I've been up to. So that's it. I just thought I would tell you what I've come to now at 54. Again, my brother passing away kind of mm, pushed me over the edge to live fearlessly. Things always work out. I can always go back to what I was doing before if I need to. I don't want to have a plan B, so that's not going to happen. I'm going to keep creating and I'm an artist. So what are you? What are you trying to hide? Are you trying to hide anything? Do you know that your passion lies somewhere else, but you um, are kind of covering that up because you don't believe in yourself enough to put that out there. So, yeah. Okay, have a great day. 
And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.